I'm Carol Wheel and I'm a lead teacher in English and ICT at Danecourt Grammar School. My name is Karen McWilliam, I am English teacher at Danecourt Grammar School and this is our team teaching lesson on Shakespeare. Hands up, what's iambic pentameter? It's where you have a weak syllable then a strong syllable. Good. And why is it called pentameter? What's special about the number? You may. There's ten, uh, um, ten syllables in Good. each. So it's five pairs of syllables. One weak, one stressed. What we did with the lesson was we actually approached Shakespeare by way of iambic pentameter to give year nine pupils a first look at how Shakespeare works and how to actually approach the text. They had two contrasting characters. We had Puck from A Midsummer Night's Dream and Macbeth, obviously from Macbeth. And the idea was that pupils actually went through and looked at what rhythm was being used in each of these verses, um, how the syllables broke down, and then trying to see how that was then reflected into the character's emotional state. If I told you that where the full stops come represents how the character feels. What do you think? How do, how do you think Puck feels? Um, he's sort of, like, straight-minded. He knows what he's talking about and he's explaining it to someone. Good. Rochelle, tell me. <laughs> Macbeth's full stops all over the page. How do you think he's feeling? I think um, that he's probably quite angry, but, like, short, cos he's used short, abrupt sentences. Good. So that all the full stops are in the middle of the page. Good. Now they are working out how many syllables are on each line and plotting it on a graph and hopefully they should find that Macbeth's speech is actually quite erratic and the syllables move up and down across the page whereas Puck's is much more regulated. So just looking at sentence structure and the number of syllables on a page they're already starting to get a little bit of the emotion behind the speech and what's going on with the characters without even having to look at any of the language within the text. Are you finding that it's, it's nice and even, like the Puck one? No. Where's the syllables? We're a little bit all over the place. Yeah. Uh, we're team teaching, so Karen's leading the lesson, but my role really is to support her and my class to help discipline, because obviously there's a quite a few characters here who need a bit more support than normal, and also to add an extra dimension in the teaching process because I'll have different ideas and my students also have a different approach because they did something beforehand that's different to her classes. What does Macbeth's graph look like? George. It's like all over the place. It's all over the place. OK, what do you think that means is going on inside his head? He's probably upset or angry by something, like he's miss missing something or yeah. maybe he's giving up something. Yeah, he's interrupting himself, isn't he? He's here, there and everywhere. Something comes into his head, then something else comes into his head, then something else. OK, Rochelle. I think he has a lot of mixed emotions at the yeah. time, and that's why his thoughts have shown a pattern of, like, being that everywhere. He's here, there and everywhere. Yeah. Good. It's quite a risk team teaching with somebody else, but Karen and I are incredibly similar in our teaching styles. We both like to take risks with our teaching and try out new ideas. We teach in a plaza which is getting increasingly um, familiar up and down the land. And it's a big wide space and there are no, there's no nowhere to hide really. And normally there'd be a barrier between the two classes and we teach separately. But we thought, no, let's take the opportunity to teach in a more engaging style and involve a gr bigger group of people to see what comes out of it. So it was quite risky, but I think the rewards were immense. Puck, what genuinely did we find? Yeah. His graph is mostly on a straight line. Good. What did you find? <clears throat> um, he's quite, I'd say he's probably quite calm and yeah. collected, but then has certain moments where he's a bit... Good. Be excited. Perfect. If I tell you that without looking at a single bit of language, you've captured exactly what's going on in each of those characters. How about that? You just analysed Shakespeare. The boys were particularly engaged. Yeah. And uh, they, were doing a, they were using their mathematical skills yeah. to plot it. So they were transferring skills from a different part of the curriculum mm. into an English lesson, which they wouldn't normally do. It's quite nice to learn about something that we might not always learn about. 
And it's, it's really interesting as well because some of the stories we can relate to some of today's like films and books. It gives us like an insight to the past where we we can't travel back to back in time, but we can at least try to understand what they thought. We got a chance to all work together. So. Yeah, in different forms. Yeah. It shows that anybody, and we've got quite a mixed ability in there, mm. and they could all access these very, very difficult texts mm. because they had tools. It's a toolkit. Yeah.